Hi, this is Dice Kimura. I'm a Miami guitar teacher. And uh, today I'm doing a video blog talking about this concept of advanced guitar lessons. And this is actually a very difficult subject for me to tackle, um, but I thought I'd give it a try. And first off, I want to say that advanced students are my favorite students, okay? Um, I'm a full-time guitar instructor and I take on lots of beginners, um, absolute beginners, intermediates, um, but advanced students and even students that are trying to go pro or semi-pro are my favorite because they're the closest to my heart. You see, before I was a full-time guitar teacher, I was a student and then I, had, I was a beginner student, an intermediate student, and I was an advanced student. So I uh, really know how you feel and what you're going through as an advanced student. And I really enjoy working with advanced students because uh, we can, well, first of all, we share the same passion of guitar. So it's not just business, like I have a guitar teaching business and you wanna be a client. It's more like I love guitar and so do you and how can we really talk and share these ideas and concepts. But advanced students, they tend to be able to understand big concepts um, fun concepts, we can do fun songs, we can talk about real gear and band situations, um, real life situations where the rubber meets the road, should I say. Um, but I also want to say that the most challenging students I have are usually the advanced students, believe it or not. So it's kind of an interesting topic that I want to present to you today, but it's this dichotomy that my favorite students are the advanced students, and at the same time, my most challenging students are the advanced students. So I wanna talk about a little bit, little bit of what I have to navigate as a guitar instructor um, when I'm dealing with my favorite students, which is advanced students, okay? They are precious, but they can be difficult. So, and by the way, um, when I was an advanced student, I was very difficult, <laughs> so um, I really get it, okay? Um, I was broke and always spotty with my attendance and, you know, fortunately I had some really good instructors that really cared about me and really wanted the best for me, that really helped me. Uh, so anyway, um, now I'm in a position to give back and help other people with their dream, right? Their dream of playing music or pursuing their passion to play on the level that they want to play. So. Um, I want to start this off by just acknowledging that uh, to the advanced student, I'm talking about somebody that's been playing nonstop for like three years or seven years or even 20 years, um, the, the, the topic and subject of music, your music specifically, is going to be very, very personal for you, okay? Um, in other words, this isn't some nonchalant, nonchalant topic like, you know, how your tulips are looking in your garden or... Um, you know, just this is something you deeply care about. You spent a lot of time and energy and money and passion, and uh, you've really you've been up late at night, you know, trying to figure this out for years. And so you're very, very. It's a very personal thing. It's a very uh, an attached thing. So for you to venture out of the comfort of your own safety, of you know your mind uh, or your way of doing things, and leave your room or your studio and to go out and then try out a guitar teacher, that is a huge leap of faith. I think a lot more than a beginner, if we can acknowledge that. Just um, advanced students, um, you know, there's, there's a big uh, hope and expectation that's gonna be probably be a lot more than just a beginner, you know, because this is your hopes and dreams. And if you're an advanced student, you're a specific type of person. You're not afraid to practice, you're diligent, You've spent money on your passion. You put your money where your mouth is. You show up, you take lessons, you pay for them. You go home and practice. You apply it, maybe you're in bands. Um, you're a real doer and a go-getter. You're not just some passive person. Not to put down the beginners, because we all start somewhere, but you've really earned your salt if you've reached this place to be advanced. But it's a highly personal topic. Your music is very, very personal, and allowing anyone to come into your head and speak into the way you think about music or to expose your weaknesses about music or to help you navigate through your weaknesses, um, I think is a very, very personal thing. And so a lot of times, um, 
And but before before I really get into uh, more of the nitty gritty details here, um, let me actually before I do that, let me just adjust the lighting if I can. Okay, cool. Sorry. All right. So before I get into nitty gritty details here, I also want to say, just want to preface this little talk I'm giving, just to say that let's just acknowledge that you're hitting a ceiling. Okay, you're hitting a ceiling in your playing. That's why you're coming to see me, or that's why you're you're seeking advanced lessons, um, because if you were doing fine on your own the way you've been doing it you wouldn't need a, a teacher. So I'm going to assume coming into this thing, you've somehow either plateaued or you're struggling with understanding something or you're hitting some kind of ceiling in your learning curve. And this is just after years of experience um, that I've discovered that in people, okay? And um, by the way, I just want to pre-qualify myself just real quick. Um, I've been playing full-time for over 30 years. I started playing when I was six. I've taken guitar lessons for like 15 years. I've been giving guitar lessons for about 15 years. And I was an advanced student on the guitar. I started when I was six. I was advanced by about 10 or 11 years old. And um, uh, I really get it in terms of all the fears and frustrations and uh, financial woes and all the stuff of being a young passionate student on the guitar and struggling to find a really good advanced guitar teacher that can really get it and take me to the next level um, <clears throat> so I grew up uh, I'm actually I live in Miami and I'm an American citizen but I grew up in Japan uh, and I, I had to travel far and wide to find a good guitar teacher uh, it took me you know hours and many trains anyway that's a whole nother video but I want to get back to you. So as a uh, guitar teacher, I have to diagnose the advanced student. And I want you to know that the diagnosing process uh, can take a long time, okay? To properly diagnose you. Remember, you're advanced, okay? You come in to see me for a one hour guitar lesson, let's say. And then, of course, the expectation is to start teaching you right away within an hour, which I go ahead and do, by the way. But you got to realize that I have to, within about a few minutes, I have to actually size you up and see where you're at. And after years of, of playing, so all your songs and rhythms and styles and grooves to diagnose your weaknesses and strengths. And to be honest and to be fair, I don't want just a few minutes. If you've been playing seven years, let's say, I would want like several hours to really get to know everything that you can do um, and so I just want to put that out there that you really if you're gonna go see an advanced student a teacher then just be prepared for the whole pro process the learning process to pick up the proper amount of steam and momentum it could take several weeks of consistently going to the teacher until you and the teacher are 100% eye-to-eye -to -eye in understanding exactly where you're at and what you need and how to teach the information in a way that you're gonna understand and process. And of course, I as a teacher, I have to understand how you think, what kind of teaching method is gonna be most effective for you. You know, do you learn by sight or by ear? Do you learn just by watching me play? Do I have to break it down for you? Do you learn by tabs? Um, do, you, do you wanna know concepts? Do you wanna know music theory? And then I have to get in there Usually when I deal with advanced people that are self-taught, um, they have uh, what I call cold and hot pockets. So it's kind of like when you're swimming in the ocean and you, it could be a warm day and then all of a sudden you hit a cold pocket of water. Or it's like all of a sudden you're just playing and I'm watching you play and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, there's a, there's a weakness there. You're doing all down picking, but I see you don't do up picking. You don't do alternate picking. Or you know a lot of power chords, you don't know anything past the major seventh. Or, you, you know, you can do eighth notes, but you really can't do um, backbeat rhythms, you know. These are just examples. By the way, on a side note, the most common problem I encounter with uh, advanced students or students that think they're advanced is the rhythm. Rhythm is usually the universal challenge for most uh, students. Rarely do I have a student that's really stuck. I have students that learn from me 
that are not stuck and were just flowing, but those people a lot of times have great rhythm. Usually the people that are really stuck, uh, they're usually getting stuck in rhythm. It's either rhythm or modal playing in music theory. That's usually two main spots. You know, more the, the more obvious techniques got ironed out in the intermediate phase. But anyway, so I just want to point out and preface this talk by saying <clears throat> you've probably hit a ceiling in doing it your way. And I, I'd like you to acknowledge that. Okay. I know it's hard but you've hit a ceiling and that's why you want to see a teacher and in order to see the teacher um <clears throat> you've got to you know expose yourself and your your strengths and your weaknesses to the teacher let the teacher diagnose you right and then help you get through your ceiling now what you think is your problem and what's your real problem may be two different things because if you go into the situation with a self-diagnosis that may be correct and it may not be correct so the question is are you open to your teacher's diagnosis of you or do you want your teacher to accept your diagnosis of you i'll let you think about that for a second it's good to kind of get this stuff out of the way before you go to see the teacher okay and that goes to say that you also need to thoroughly vet your teacher right you want to make sure that your teacher right is worthy of being your teacher you don't want to get a teacher that can't diagnose you or doesn't know what they're talking about or is a good player but can't teach like you know what i'm saying um i work really hard for me personally on my website dicekimura.com to put all kinds of videos of me playing so that you can really see um the way i play and my playing style my proficiency my uh, proudness with modal playing, all kinds of stuff, technical uh, abilities. All this stuff is very obvious on my, my videos. And the reason I took so much time recording these videos and putting them on my site is I want you, especially advanced people, to be able to thoroughly vet me just even on the website, you know, before you come and make an appointment. That way you can know, like, is this the guy, is this the style, is this the vibe, is this the delivery, is this the, the method that I really want to learn? And hopefully uh, a lot of that's obvious just in that, okay? But make sure you vet your teacher. In other words, uh, what I'm really asking you to do if you're advanced is to like come to a place where you trust your teacher. I mean, there's trust that's needed to take you into the unknown, right? You're moving into unknown. Hopefully you're moving into things that you don't already know or you couldn't figure out for yourself. That's why you're coming to see a teacher. But then you have to navigate through these unknown waters of letting a teacher diagnose you and decide what they think you should do. So um, it goes to without saying that, you know, there's sometimes a power struggle between the advanced student and the teacher. And I really make a point not to struggle with my students. I really do let them steer and, and let them decide. But I just want to point out that sometimes I have to really coax them into trying to seeing it a different way because sometimes you know they have the blinders on of what they think they need and i'm not saying you don't have a right to that opinion you know think about it you're advanced so what you've been doing has been working for you to some degree and that was a lot of work to get there you know but then to think in a different way it might be challenging you, you say well give me an example what's a different way well, a lot of times, not a lot of time, not all of you, but some some people when they come in, you know, they they they're they're good at certain things, and they say, well, I really want to learn this song, and it'll be a very difficult song. It'll be a song that's way above their level, and they'll assume, and, and rightly so, but they'll assume if I could play this song, then I'll be this good. Like I'm this good, but if I could play this song, I'll be this good. So you got to teach me this song. And just to give you an analogy of that, if you were to do that at a gym with like a personal trainer, if you say, well, I can lift 100, but I want to lift 300. So we're just going to do 300 today, and you're going to help me get it up there. And, uh, but don't let me get hurt or I'll sue. Um, do you see how that's kind of ridiculous? You know, if, if I can lift 100, then I should try to lift maybe 105, or maybe a hundred two more times, you know, but assuming I can just go to 300 because I got a trainer uh, is kind of crazy. So um, I call this the holy grail 
a, it's a holy grail or it's like a Hail Mary mentality. It's like a Hail Mary. It's like, I'm going to bring this crazy song. It's like a Hail Mary. Man, if I could do, I'm going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it because it's the holy grail. And I'm going to make you teach it to me. And, you know, as a teacher, I was like, you know, I don't know if I would start with that song for you. You know, I maybe I would start with, you know, if you're at 100, I would find something that's 105. I'd be like, what can you really handle for weekly lessons? What can you handle in seven days? Because I want you to go from victory to victory to victory. I want your first lesson to be victorious. I want your next lesson to be victorious. I want your next week to be victorious. Because the mental aspect of this thing is very, very important. If you take on more than you can chew, um, you start getting really discouraged. And you get discouraged and you no longer have the appetite to run home and play your guitar with a new level of fire. Which, by the way, is probably the most valuable uh, thing that you can get from a guitar instructor is the fire. Though, If you love the way an instructor plays and you get motivated when you see an instructor that's worth its weight in gold because you can't motivate yourself beyond a certain point but if your instructor's answering questions and can motivate you uh that's that's a really good place to be so do you understand how dangerous it is to to take on a project that's way more than than you can handle or attain because it crushes your motivation and so i might say hey i think you should work on this song because you know it really features um, this one technique, excuse me, it really features this one technique that I think, you know, be good for you. But let's say you look at that song and you go, oh, well, that's an easy song. I don't need to come and see you to do that song. I came all this way and seen you and paying you this money. So we need to do this really hard song. But of course, you and I both know that it'll take you like another year of consistent lessons to do that song that you want to do. So... It's, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up to, you know, you try it the first week and it's really frustrating. You're, get, you're getting almost nowhere. But you try it again the second week and you're vexed and it's really not coming together. And you try it again the third week and you're like, throw everything you got at it, all your free time. It, you're just not getting it. And then your conclusion is, after three weeks of this torture, is you say you think to yourself, man, this is a sucky teacher. <laughs> Where did I find this guy? This guy's an idiot. He clearly can't help me play this song. He can't help me lift 300, you know. But, you know, that's a, a broken mentality in the beginning. So what I what, what I suggest will work for you both as a beginner, in, intermediate, advanced, or even me as a pro is you need to think in increments. If you can do this level of song, when you work with a teacher, you want to do the next level and then the next level and the next level and work weekly and keep advancing iron out issues as they come up where little incremental issues of like precision consistency uh alternate picking attack groove dynamics timing form all of these things you can iron them out as you work with a teacher incrementally one song at a time and on a song that's really your level and i would even submit to you that there are songs that I think that you may need to do that you don't think you need to do. That you think you can handle it, maybe even stuff you think you already learned, but I'm like, no, you're going to see when you work on it that you actually missed the whole point of the song. And that's why you're plateauing. And that's why you're hitting a glass ceiling. Because every time you come against that one thing, maybe it's like a backbeat or something rhythmical a lot of times, uh, you just kind of mentally check out, you go the other way, and you don't even know that you're doing it. And then you've, you've diminished or belittled these easy songs because they're below you. And then you've really put on, a, on an altar or a, or a shelf where you're really looking up to the ideal or the appeal of these really hard songs, thinking it's going to catapult you in this another level of playing, which indeed, if you could play it, it would, but you're nowhere near playing it because you won't even do the smaller songs, the easier songs, you know? So that brings me to my next topic, which of learning in increments, which is you should try to get weekly lessons, weekly lessons. And believe me, this is not a plug for any of my students. If you're listening out there, it's not a plug that you should come see me every single week. I'm not trying to like solicit more lessons out of you, but I'm saying, come on, 
if you're going to actually have an incremental increase in your ability to play guitar and you want to check in with your, let's say you've been playing like seven years, let's say, or five years, and you've got five years of experience that you expect your teacher to actually understand and figure out what you're doing, but let's say your attendance is spotty. Let's say you just pop in once a month or every other month or whatever, um, and your teacher, poor guy, he doesn't even like remember what we're working on. I mean, like I will make notes, you know, in my calendar so I can remember what I was working on with a client. But it really helps to like see you every seven days. So then we have like some kind of routine of, of what's going on. So you're not going to have real increments that is giving you the motivation. If you're spotty with your attendance, you're just kind of over it. Now, if you're busy or if you can't afford it, I totally get that. Okay, but I just today in this video I want to talk about what's optimum, what's ideal, and what's realistic. You know, the, don't forget, you know, you, you can improve 500% at on the guitar, you can improve 5,000% in a few months just as a beginner, but you could practice and practice and practice for a year straight and then only improve 5% when you're advanced because it's really hard to improve once you're advanced. It's those little incremental jumps that are worth their weight in gold. And for you to really delight in that and look for that, that's not easy, you know? So you really, that's why you need a coach to get in with you every single week and to help you with your regimen, your routine, and everything about it. And it's expensive. I mean, it can be, you know? I know when I was, you know, a struggling musician, I had to work three jobs, you know, to pay for my guitar lessons and guitars and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I get it. So that's not, I'm not trying to... Uh, be too strict about that I'm just saying that's just ideal okay for me personally by the way I let students come and go whenever they please I don't really give them any flack for it because I definitely understand but I just want to take this opportunity to talk about what's ideal weekly lessons are ideal um, I want to talk about this topic of trust you got to trust your teacher he, he's, he or she is like your coach right so at some point you got to realize that there's value in what they're saying and you want to do it their way and not just your way and that also kind of talks about, um, w that actually brings up another topic that's kind of a difficult topic, but it's ego, right? We all have some degree of ego. Now, if you're an advanced student, I imagine you have a little bit more ego attached to your playing than, let's say, a beginner, because you're actually good. There are things you're good at. So it's understandable that there'd be like a resistance in you. But I'm saying this to help you. What's really going to make you improve? It has to be something radical. It would have to be something that you haven't thought for yourself. You're smart enough to get advanced. You're hardworking enough to get advanced, right? You're tenacious and diligent enough to get advanced. But for you to get stuck and then for to get help to get unstuck, it's going to require a mind greater than the one you're currently in. You know, that's why you need to get a teacher that you can submit to and be like, tell me what to do. Listen, you got the rest of your life to work on your favorite song. But if I can tell you just a pearl of wisdom, if you really do get in the presence of a great teacher, or a great player, be an, an open mind, be, have an open uh, mentality and say, what do you think I should do? You know what I'm saying? That way, instead of telling them, hey, I want to do exactly this, and you'll just get exactly that, they could actually hook you up with knowledge way bigger than what you even would have thought or dreamed. So that's just an option for you to think of. And it all goes back to what I said earlier. you got to thoroughly vet your teacher. If you can't find a good teacher, get on Skype, okay? Um, or you can do courses online, but... How can you vet your teacher? Bottom line, I don't care how many degrees they have after their name. Um, I don't care what their resume is even. If you listen to the way they play the guitar, if you don't like the way they play the guitar, then you shouldn't learn from them. You know? You shouldn't learn from them. You know? You should be able to go to a guitar teacher and say, hey, will you just play for me? Just play. Just do whatever you want. And based on that, I'd like to make an informed decision if I want to learn from you. That way we don't have to make this about you know, necessarily, you know, where you went to school. You know, let's just make this more about, do you got the magic? Do you got the mojo? You know? Um, otherwise, I don't want to waste my time, you know? So, um, it's not easy. You know, I've been an advanced student. Um, and um, it's, it's really, really hard. 
but I want to stress again, my favorite students are the advanced students because those are the ones that we can talk about with deep concepts. Those are the ones that are the most fun. Uh, those are the ones that are closest to my heart because we share the same passion, you know? Um, but uh, it just helps to be able to do this video because I'm just talking to whoever's listening. I definitely wanna hear from you. So please leave me a comment, give me a like or a subscribe if you dig what I'm saying. Um, but share with me your experiences, you know, of maybe some teachers you've had, or if you're a fellow teacher of some students you had. Um, I wanna know your insights. I know I'm always learning and I can learn from you. So thanks so much. This is Dice Kimura. I'll see you next video. I'm out.